What is up, Humanoid Nation? I'm gonna do something I haven't done in years, and that's watch an entire TNA Impact show. This is gonna suck, because I haven't watched a whole show in so long, because the shit has been just shit. But I'm gonna give you my honest reaction and thoughts on the show in each segment and match. So, let's get this torture started, man. Let's do this. First segment in, non-stop talking. They kept on going on and on and on and shit. I see that TNA hasn't changed with their talking. Cause the last time I saw a show, they did nothing but talk. I loved it way back when they just did wrestling. They just went in there, wrestling, talking was not a necessity. They got their point across. There was a little bit of talking and then more wrestling. Then over time it went from fucking talking to just talking, 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 talking. And then wrestling. So yeah, we have Bobby Roode come in complaining that he says he wants one more match for the title against Bobby Lashley. And then the rejected version of Nation of Domination 2.0 comes out. MVP and Kenny King just talking shit. If you want in a fucking handicap match against Bobby Roode. All that, they could just said, hey, we want you in a handicap match so you can prove yourself to get a title shot or not, blah, blah, blah. Instead, they had to uh, run around it and just keep on talking. Bobby Roode accepts. God damn, is this shit? Sorry. Move the camera there. I like to say one thing though. The new look of the TNA Impact Zone or the arena. It's pretty cool. You got this bluish thing going on where they just focus in on the ring. And you you know there's people are in the audience, but they don't show that because like dark in eyes. They just want to focus inside the ring is what they want. That is a pretty cool idea. So let's see what the next segment is. I asked for a match. I got Angelina Love versus Taryn Terrell. They're on commercial break right now because they just got their entrances in. Yay! What is wrong with Angelina Love's face? There's so much Botox in that face. Holy shit. She does not look good. Her body is awesome to look at. She's a butterface is what I gotta say. Her whole body looks nice except for her face. If they put a paper bag over her head, she still look banging, but not show her face. She takes it going on against Terry Terrell. Oh, oh yay, wow, this is gonna be an awesome match. Let's see what happens. Correction, it's a triple Fred women's match with Madison Rain, Terry Terrell, and Angelina Love. They could have just said that in the beginning. They didn't say that at all. Or I wasn't paying attention, I don't know. I'll take it that they didn't mention at all since this is TNA we're talking about. But anyway, the beautiful people, Angelina Love and Velvet Sky, just start being the shit out of Terry Terrell while Madison Rain is still walking down the ramp. They get their kicks in, she gets out. Decent match overall. I was surprised, I was kind of entertained. Never seen Taryn Terrell ever wrestle, so I guess she has some moves. I don't know who trained her, but she looks like she knows what she's doing. Also, I forgot to mention that uh, Six-Sided Ring is back. That's pretty cool since the last time I seen TNA Impact was when they had the Six-Sided Ring before they went back to the Four-Sided Ring. And now back to the Six-Sided Ring, okay? Is it me or does Earl Hebner look really, really sick in this match? He looks so freaking skinny. He started to look like Skeletor. He does not look like a very healthy human being. He looks like he's really sickly looking. I don't know, like he's dying? But anyways, on to the next segment. So after the knockouts match, the female version of the blue meanie comes out and starts whooping ass. I call her the female blue version 
and I fucked that up. I call her the female version of the blue mini because she's wearing the fucking thingamajig that painted on the mask thing that blue mini painted on his face all the time, except it's black. And she is kind of hefty, but I like the big women. So it's kind of working on for it. I'm saying it's turning me on. Yes. Female blue meanie is a turn on. And she can kick some ass. We go backstage where Nation 2.0 is having a talk. They're about to start shit. And Bobby Lashley talks. I haven't heard Bobby Lashley talk since the, when, since he was in WWF. And when he sounded like a little girl. Remember he was a big jacked up dude. And he only, any, anytime he talked he sounded like... I'm gonna kick your ass, Finley, because you're a bullshitter. How did that come? Also, do you, do you take, I'm surprised that he can actually talk like a man now, because he actually has a man's voice, is all I'm, what I'm trying to say. What? Go back on SmackDown when he was first showed up. He sounded like a pubescent boy. Next, we have a tag team match. James Storm and Sonata versus Loki and Tigre Uno. Holy shit, this was an amazing match. This is what I remember from the olden days of TNA where people can actually have a decent match. Like, go, just go. Like, near fall after near fall after near fall. That is what I miss from the olden days. Speaking of the olden days, I would have not recognized James Storm if they didn't mention him by name, since James Storm now looks like a fucking homeless bum. He really does look like a homeless guy. I seriously thought they just got a homeless guy and just put him in the ring. It's like, hey you, you want a sandwich? Come and fight in our building. It's like, okay. Seriously. But the Sonata guy, he's awesome, man. He reminds me of the 2014 version of Takamichinoku. Hey kids, remember that guy? Only a more built up, jacked up version of Taka Michinoku. And this Tigre Uno guy, I know nothing about him, but this guy is a high flyer. And low key, I love low key. It's awesome to see him back again. And him and his kicks and all the stuff that he does. I have nothing else to say to bat. I have nothing to say bad about this match. It was awesome. I cannot say that enough. Oh. I can think of one bad thing. Taz's incepted commentary. It's like, dude, uh, Sonata is uh, basically a ho ho ho. It's like a Benedict Arnold in uh, Japan and Tokyo and everywhere in blah blah blah. Do they even have Benedicts or Arnolds in Japan? It's like, oh, 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 oh. God damn it, Taz. But other than that, it was a worthwhile match to watch. I'm actually surprised they have wrestling matches on a wrestling show, especially on TNA Impact. What you consider a wrestling match for the next match is a no disqualification match. Samuel Shaw, the crazy fucker, against a guy named Bram. Some dude named Bram. Who the hell is Bram? But anyways, it's like a regular no disqualification contest and of course, Taz and his in separate commentary he's like oh Samuel Shaw has like tattoos and stuff it's like it takes hours it takes very long hours depending on how long it takes two days blah blah blah, blah, blah. he just didn't shut up and then talking about a slew of chairs and the ring and the, oh my god today thank you Taz for that insepid commentary so nothing much to say about this no disqualification match Samuel Shaw pretty much kicked the ass of Bram Muffin the entire match. And they basically put him all on the chairs uh, from the top rope and that's what got a TNA chant. Wasn't that great of a spot. I seen better, but the TNA crowd is so easy to uh, impress. They just started chanting TNA, TNA. And then Brad Muffin won. Yeah, the Brad Muffin won. Not very much to remember about this match. Like I said, who the hell's Brad Muffin? So Samuel Shaw is knocked down in the middle of the ring. Some chick named Brittany comes out. Who the hell is Brittany? 
It's been a while since I've seen TNA. Okay, she goes and hugs him. And by hug him, I mean just lift him up unconsciously and hold him in place. Okay? We go somewhere in a dark room backstage where they interview Bobby Roode. And of course, he's bitching about having one more chance to get the title. What is up with the camera angles in this show? They're showing from the side, they're moving the camera around, full view, zoom into his face, zoom out. Whoever's running the camera is probably having a spaz attack. We go to another backstage segment, but this time with the Dudley Boys. I mean Team 3D, because we can't say Dudley Boys anymore. Fuck it, I'll call them the Dudley Boys. Bubba Ray is for some reason behind B Devon. Devon's just standing there like this. Not saying a damn thing. And Bubba's just spouting off words. It's very distracting. And also, the camera is still moving the fuck around. What in the fuck? The American Wolves come in and start blabbing their shit. Saying this and that and that and this and that. Devon still stands there like... It's not saying nothing. Way to contribute, Devon. Bully Ray just takes it. And then they just walk away. The next match we have is basically a two-on-one -on -one handicap elimination match where Bobby Roode has either to win by pinfall or submission. Remember that, kids? Decent match. MVP gets eliminated first. My god, this guy has cannot go anymore. He lost his edge. I just gotta say it, MVP just looks horrible in the ring. He's not gassed up anymore. Oh, shit, move the camera. Sorry. He used to be so good, now he's just mad. So he's out of the ring, eliminated. Kenny King, the fastest one of the bunch, is kicking ass. So much kicking ass that Bobby Roode finally kicks his ass. And then the steroid man of the group, Bobby Lashley, comes in and just wails on Bobby Roode. So, if someone comes in and punches Bobby Roode, shouldn't Kenny King won by disqualification? Or if someone came in and beat up Kenny King, Bobby Roode would have won by DQ. Except that it didn't end by DQ. Nobody won by DQ. It just ended. I'm pretty sure in a match, two and one handicap match, if someone comes in and beats your ass, the other person gets DQ'd. I may be wrong. I have not seen TNA in so long. Someone correct me on this. I may be wrong. So the match just ended. TNA booking. Right. We go backstage to a backstage segment, which has Ethan Carter the third, or EC3 as he likes to be called, talking about how Rockstar Spud needs to man up and shit. That's basically it. Nothing else. We next get an in-ring promo with Ethan Carter the third. And man, is this promo ever so boring. What is this guy's fascination about repeating himself over and over and over? You get the gist. But yeah, it's a very boring promo. So boring that in fact, it was entertaining to just watch the blonde girl behind him in the crowd, just sitting there looking non-impressed like... The entire time. The funny thing about her is, as soon as Rockstar Spuds comes out, she does a manager cheer, like, yay! Yeah. I just have to say, Rockstar Spud comes out in the Joker suit from the 1956, 60, whatever, the Adam West version of Batman. You know, Joker wearing a massive purple suit, that comic thing. It's very funny to look at. But Rockstar Spud isn't. So we get this really boring ass ring promo between Ethan Carter III 
and Rockstar Spud. Basically, even Carter telling him like how, Spud, you failed about Dixie Carter going through a table. You suck. You suck. And slaps the shit out of him. Rockstar Spud finally mans up and pushes him back. I don't know what's up with this guy's intensity face, but that's not an intensity face. Rockstar Spud's intensity face looks like he's about to cry. Seriously, I thought he was going to break down in that middle of that ring. So yeah, this goes nowhere. What happens after that? Camera just skips to the next segment. Like, TNA has a, is really on the go. It needs to go places. Like, fuck what happened just now. Let's not put that in your head. Let's not make you think about it. We have Nick other shit you can see. We go backstage for a segment where MVP Bobby Lashley and Kenny King are celebrating for what they did before in the ring. Kurt Angle comes in, tells MVP he's not GM anymore, that he is. This is starting to remind me of WCW back in the day where there's a fucking GM or commissioner or whatever the fuck they did back then every other week. <sighs> the pain of it all, the pain. But anyways, Kurt Angle tells MVP not to do that shit no more. MVP just gives him a look of, are you serious? He leaves. The rest of the guys are going like, what are we going to do tonight? Let's go do something. And it ends. Interesting. Not. So, the main event is a table, ladders, and chairs match. But as TNA likes to call it, a full metal mayhem. Which is basically tables, ladders, and chairs. But was chains added to the name. I don't think I've ever seen a full metal mayhem match where they actually use chains. I may be wrong on this. Have they ever used chains in this match? But anyways, the match itself is pretty awesome. A lot of spots going on where like they took massive bumps. Who's in this match? The Dudley Boys. And where the, uh, apparently Devon has a great injury that doesn't allow him to talk for some reason. Bully, uh, yeah, Bully Ray, Bubba Ray, whatever. He's the only one that shouts shit. The only time Devon ever says anything is when he goes like, Move, cameraman! And does the what's up thing. The American Wolves, Eddie Edwards, and Davey Richards, the tag team champions, they regain their titles. And of course, the Hardy Boys. I can't stand the Hardy Boys anymore. Jeff has become too much of a Super Cena type person in TNA. Wings too much. Basically just like Super Cena. But in TNA. Matt just got full of himself over the last few years. It just got really annoying. Although I do like their high flying antics. They still have that. But I'm surprised they can actually do shit still. Because like. They've taken massive bumps over the years. I'm surprised they can actually do stuff in this match. But other than that. Amazing match. I don't know why they put it on free TV, why they put it on pay-per-view, which is bound for glory, which I like how they put it in Tokyo, Japan for the first time ever. Is the tag team titles being defended in that pay-per-view? I don't think it is. Because you got the Dudley Boys versus the Abyss and Tommy Dreamer for some reason. You could easily put... The American Wolves versus the Hardy Boys in a Full Metal Mayhem match in Bound for Glory, and it would have been awesome. But these shows are pre-taped way back. I don't know how TNA can keep in. I don't know how TNA can keep these in order because I'm fucking confused on the whole taping system. Because they got months of shows that taped in advance. But yeah. Other than that, I sort of went off on a tangent there, but I'm surprised for after all these years of not watching Team Impact that they actually have wrestling on this show, and decent wrestling at that. Cause, okay, I'm going to say it one last time, because like, the last time I ever watched a TNA Impact was like when the whole shit of 
four-sided ring, the, the fucking butterfly title that Jeff Hardy had, which was fucking horrible. Bunch of other crap. D'Angelo De Niro doing the whole poke gimmick and just looking retarded. I like D'Angelo De Niro. He's awesome. Ugh. Maybe they got him better. I'm not sure. I'll watch the next episode of Impact to see how it goes. As long as, at least they didn't have fucking Eric Young on this fucking show. That's one thing I like. But anyways, that's it for me. Humanoid freak out. Enjoy, Humanoid Nation. Take it easy. Bye.